1987, Capcom released one of the dopest games ever, Mega Man, or Rockman, or Rock, or Mega, or Knuckle Kid. Yeah, that was almost a thing. So this is the canon story of that game from the perspective of Mega Man, with Mega Man being played by me, Cody. Haha, <laughs> check it out, I'm the Blue Bomber. And this is the story of Mega Man, and this is the only box art that ever existed for it, ever. But before we get started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Our story begins here in the year 2000X, so freaking far in the future that we ran out of numbers. It was at the Robot Institute of Technology that my old man, Dr. Thomas Light, met a dude named Dr. Albert W. Wiley and was like, let's build robots for world peace. And I was like, let's achieve world peace by taking over the world. <laughs> yeah, they saw different angles. After graduation, they went their separate ways. My sister Roll and I, yep, my name's Rock, hers is Roll, eh? <laughs> you get it. Anyways, we were built to assist the good doctor and help him around the lab. But things got really nuts after eight of Dr. Wright's industrial robots went nuts and started off in folks. Luckily, two of them ended up being cut from our story, Oil Man and Time Man, ironically because of time constraints on the schedule. Still though, six dudes was more than Dr. Light, my sister, and my strong sense of justice could handle. So I was like, you know what, Dr. Light, let's make things Dr. Wright. Give me an arm cannon and I'll go scramble some circuits. He said, bring back their cores and I'll give you their powers and abilities. Uh, all right, that works. Dude gave me a strap and I was off. He said, go Mega Man, fight for world peace. I was like, right on baby. I went out to show six robot masters the business end of a Mega Buster and the first on the list is Cut Man. Cause D-Light told me to fight for world peace and nothing says world peace like a big pair of scissors. I got through the city in the offbeat sounding music and the only thing I could really write home about was this part of the stage. You can pull off some Mega Magic and bamf to the bottom. If you jump and press up right here, you can leave the area without any hassle. Yep, I did my research. I found him in his chamber, and even though he had some boss-looking earrings, this was the Mega Man show, and his scenes were about to be cut. That suck! Keeping it! Also keeping this nice pair of shears. Haha, <laughs> world peace. Oh, and if you stick with what I say, you can beat my game with ease and get working on your own speedruns. With that being said, I'd like to avoid repeating stages, so I'm gonna go right after Zap Brannigan himself. Number two, Elect Man. Yar, you're totally wrong about that one there, boyo! Uh... Who the heck are you? Ha <laughs> I be Gabby the Internet Dragon, and I represent the people of the web. I'm here to call you out when you can't get your facts straight, or when you're as wrong as dumb taxi wheel. Okay, but what's with the pirate voice? Arg, I too be voiced by Cody, and his skills be limited. Yeah, I know. Thank God he's handsome. So, Gabby, what was wrong about it? Well, you said you don't like repeating stages, but you have to get Gutsman's powers to get the Magna Beam, so it looks like you'll be double dipping there, boyo. Actually, no. I won't cover it here, but I learned this nifty trick watching speedruns where you can clip right through the wall and get it without any extra powers. You should check it out, Gabs. It's pretty dope. Arg, Gabby will allow it. So I ascend ever upwards, dodging evil Roombas and Zappy Pod people, all while listening to the theme from Mass Crusaders. Arg, like anyone today will get that reference. Then pause the video and look it up. Arg, cause that'll make the joke funnier. And so after I get done climbing every ladder ever, I reach the top of the telephone pole and tell Elect Man that his power is getting shut off. I throw a pair of scissors at him and start blasting that select button like a grindcore song. Arg, not a fan, boyo. Yeah, neither was he. Arg. Two down and four left to go get. Time for us to head to the big chill. That's right, the Iceman cometh at number three. Iceman. This dude is protected by flying penguins, sliding floors, and the future killer of dreams, Invisiblox. Or that's not what they're called. They ain't even that hard to beat. I don't know what they're called. All I know is I saw him on a leg man stage and I hated him then too. Wait, what do you care, Gabby? Can't you just fly over? Oh, sure, if Gabby wants to be a sissy. Can't you just use your magnet beam and big baby your way across? You got a point there, Gabs. After a few tries, I finally get to the platforms that have revolted against all those who would become their hats. I break into Iceman's igloo and tell him I'm here to kick some- Arg! What? If you steal a pun from Batman and Robin, then you become unoriginal. Good luck, boyo. Ah, crap, you're right. Ooh, I says, hey, Frosty. He says, who in the Great White North are you? I said, in Japan, they call me Rockman. In America, they call me Mega Man. But you can call me Global Warming. Yeah? Eh, yeah, Gabs? Arg, as you were, boy. Oh, as you were. You know, I felt a little bad for this dude. I just hit him with the three moves of doom. Jump, thunder beam, select button like Chun-Li's kicking it. After my visit to hockey country, it was out of the fridge and into the oven. It was time to challenge the hothead himself. Number four, Fireman. All things considered, I kind of liked it here. There's these fireballs wearing sunglasses and shark missiles. Pretty dope color scheme, too. 
Oh, and if you use the magnet beam early here, you can actually kitty pride yourself right through the wall. I hop, I skip, I jump all the way into Fireman's Furnace and tell him to get some butter because he's about to be toast. Arr, do you have to make a lame pun every time? Two more, Gabby, you'll be all right. You know the next game has eight bosses, right? Anywho, I stoke the fiery flame in and move on down the road. The next guy I fought was a blast and a half. I went romping through a cityscape looking for the owner of a bunch of bombs and a killer mohawk. Number five, Bomb Man. This place was packed with fun. Pogo bots, Pika Pews, and a few of these guys named Sniper Joe. I liked Joe. He seemed familiar in a strange way. Arr, that's because he's based off your old- Quiet, Joe. I mean, Gabby. I'm building here. After dodging some well-placed pit mines, I climb down to find Mr. Boom himself. I tell him he's leaving with a bang and hit him with a firestorm. Haha, <laughs> that guy was a dud. Down to one bot. I head on over to what I can only assume is a very gory boss. Why Gutsman? Is he gonna wing a kidney at me? Unless... Is it the Black Swordsman? Could I be getting an elf buddy? Ooh, do I get a big freaking sword? Alright, that's not even the same... You know what? Yes. Yes, you do. Oh my god, number six is Gutsman! Holy crap! Stupid slow trolleys. I turn on Firestorm and run through hoping to meet Casca. No time for catcalling construction workers. I open up the chamber. What news from Elfhelm? Is Griffith finally gonna get his comeuppance? Who the crap are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, boy -o. Aww. And that is how you make a blue bomber blue. I get bummed, then angry, and then I toss him a bomb and explode his guts out. Arr, that was messed up. Actually, for a guy named Gutsman, he didn't really have any. And with that, I was primed and ready to trot down with Wiley and give him some justice right in the mouth. That's right, Wiley. I took the scissors off your boy's head. You don't think I'm going to come snatch them eyebrows? I head on in for the big bad fight. I freeze some big eyes mid-smush and break into the lair. A few well-placed magnet memes later and I come across a big, empty room. Huh. Come on out, you white-coated devil! I bellowed. Or are you just too yellow? That's all you are, is a big yellow devil. Son of a Samus. I had to think fast because something started pulling itself together. It would have made quick work of me, but once it winked, I had it figured out. Throw some lightning at it, and once it connected, I hit the select button like a woodpecker on a tree made of Red Bull. I continued my journey, but I decided to switch things up and go in for an aerial approach. Maybe I'll put an elbow drop on him. Yeah, right on Wiley's bald spot. Seriously, Al, you look like Joe Pesci after a Home Alone trap. He's based off Albert Einstein, dingus. He should have been based off Isaac Newton. So majestic. Continuing ever deeper, I come across a familiar face. Cut, man! There's two of you? Well, I guess that's why they call it a pair of scissors. Oh, I dare you to be more lame. What? It's the first story and he's already running out of ideas. Oh, and look there, while I got the power back on, there's Elect Man. What's he gonna bring back next? The pharaohs of Egypt? You're not too far off there, boy -o. Well, I'm just saying, the dude could have built an army of cut folk and give me a real headache. Why spread them out? Why not march them out on- Stuck! Oh, I'm stuck! I thought this was it! And as I stood there waiting for this pod to knock it off, I get ambushed by the most handsome robot I had ever seen! Wait, then that means- Oh, he's not building them wholesale. It's some kind of evil scientist copy machine. Well, sorry, gorgeous, but anything less than the best is a felony. <laughs> I can't lie, that was good. Thanks, Gabby. A good reference wasn't going to save me, though. This copy was good at being me. He copied every move. I figured the best course of action was to time the jumps, throw on a firestorm, and let him headbutt that shield. It made sense at the time, and hey, it worked. I got your counterfeit warehouse up in smoke, Wiley. Now I'm headed down the tubes to get you. This level was a pretty fast-paced level. You just ran through some water and did a lot of running at that. Ran myself right into a security system wrapped in a bubble and causing some trouble. Pretty straightforward. Grab the rocks and start playing catch. And then once the rocks are gone, try to find the weakness. I tried them all, but nothing beat my trusty Mega Buster and a whole lot of B button. Oh, and for some reason, if you throw the rocks and press B the second the rocks are off screen, some more Mega Magic, suddenly you'll be holding another rock. This takes some really good timing on your part though. With the last deed done, now it's just me and that photoelectric dork Dr. Wily. I could tell he was feeling particularly evil because he lined the place with not the Black Swordsman and one of those stupid trolleys. Use that magnet beam one last time, grab Capcom's favorite pinwheel, and then a quick little boss rush. Here we go. I defuse the Bomb Man, I extinguish Fire Man, melt Ice Man, and then I punch this jerk right in the guts. The 11th hour had come, and it's just you and me, Mustache. And I don't know whether I want to kill it with fire or if I want to use that Thunder Beam and hit the select button like the Micro Machine guy right in Morse code. You know what? I've made my choice. You remember them scissors, Al Dubs? I'm here to sling them at your face. I jump, I duck, I dodge, and justice is served. Ha ha! E equals MC. Suck it! The deed was done, the day was won, and I made my way home just in time for the sun to go down. Night fell, and as we all know, running all night turns all robots into real boys. I'm home and killed everything. Yay! And that's how I brought down my Padre's old rival and saved everything. The end.
Any questions? Darg! Yes, the blue dragon with the bad gimmick. I just wanted to point out that you were wrong from the get-go. They weren't old rivals. Wily was Light's assistant and turned evil. We programmed the industrial robots and placed them as leaders in six different empires of Monsteropolis. Really, Gabby? That's the plot from the American Instruction Manual. I don't think the guys that wrote that would know the original plot if it bit them in their crooked helmet. Well, when you put it that way, it sounds as dirty as a poop deck. But I see your point. The box art sums up all you really need to know about those guys. Yeah, and the box art itself lives in infamy, almost to the state that it rivals the franchise it's based off of. So it's known by all, and much better personalities have told the infamous story of the box art. Just do a quick search and you'll find some of my favorites talking about it. So if you've ever heard the phrase, I feel like I'm kicking a dead horse here, this is like the horse is dead, decomposed, eaten by the ground, and helped to birth a new tree for horses to grow. Wow. Yeah. I think we're all good here. Gabby's gonna go figure out what to do with a drunken sailor. Right on, Gabby. See you next time. As for me, I'm going to go stand on a rooftop and let these beautiful locks breathe. Later, Reploids.